Hey, what's going on, everybody? Video 44 coming at you in another video. All right, so I guess I'll call this a Laker rant because um, it's not a rant. That's just what I call them, you know. So this is this is a peaceful conversation. Nothing bad in my mind at all. Well, we have our issues, so if I happen to bring them up, that's what it is, but that's not where I'm going with this. I think at the end of the day, I'm looking at what the Lakers are trying to form together, and I'm thinking Bradley Beal, Le LeBron James, Anthony Davis. That's our our trio. If we if we are able to maneuver that uh, Westbrook contract and trade it for him, and possibly either KCP or Kyle Kuzma, if the trade tracker is accurate. Of course, if you listen to my video earlier. I believe there are many, many, many options, including involving other teams, to keep that from looking that way. But nevertheless, that's what the numbers will dictate matches up. All right. So the thing about it is, as I envision our team, I really do like the, the gist of what we already have in place. Why... Am I so excited about that? Because there's a guy by the name of Mason Jones who played maybe a couple of games, maybe about four games, maybe three or four games at the end of the season for us. And he showed me that he's a piece. A big positionless player who can get offensive rebounds and use his size to draw fouls, putting pressure on the rim. He's a big guy, so he definitely can use his size to do things. He showed us that he can put the ball on the, on the floor and create for himself a little bit. You know, he was doing some one-on-one -on -one action stuff that I, I was really, really impressed seeing him do. And when you consider what we saw from some of the players in Boston, guys like Grant Williams, I look at, at, at Jones as somebody who can help us in that way. Maybe not with the same defensive mindset or anything like that, but a huge body. Um, who can help us, you know, we look at a guy like uh, Brandon Clark in, 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 in Memphis, you know what I'm saying, guys with that type of size, I mean, Brandon Clark is a special athlete too, but guys with that type of size, it's like you, you, you really want to value them. So I'm looking at him, Mason Jones, I call him 40 Jones at the end of the season, that was my nickname for him because he wears number 40. And I look at him, he's a big player. We got Stanley Johnson. I'm excited about Stanley Johnson. I know who, what he can bring to the table. I understand that he, he he's can defend. Um, you know, his set shot is a confident shot, and, and he plays hard. And I think his upside is tremendous on the defensive end, absolutely tremendous. And seeing what we see from players like Andrew Wiggins and certain players who are starting to make late jumps in their careers, I think he's a candidate to be a guy who can really continue to be a starter in this league for us. And I like what he brings defensively, particularly. All right? So, so keep in mind, I'm thinking Mason Jones, big body, crash glass, defensive potential. Stanley Johnson, we know what he is. He's a big dude who's going to play defense. He, he plays defense against good players. He plays defense against scrappy players. Love that player for us. Now I'm looking at Winyan Gabriel. Winyan Gabriel is a guy who works – Tremendously hard, running the floor, rebounds the ball, athletic, plays defense, swats everything he sees a lot of the time. Real upside in the passing lanes with his length as well. Can play about three positions. I didn't see a whole lot from William Gabriel that I didn't like, to be honest with you. I don't think he's a superstar, but he's going to stay in his lane, running the passing lanes, catching lobs playing hard and, and like I said once before about him I haven't seen too many players play um, in interior basketball with a certain level of intent as it pertains to cutting into the, the paint and, and, and going at it with a certain level of, of, of ferociousness it's, it's hard to explain what it is I'm trying to describe but the way that he, he attacks getting in position in, in the paint and the way he attacks the paint, uh, you know, with intent of catching the ball and, and, and making himself available for, for buckets, 
is something that tells me he's going to get a lot of looks at scoring the ball. For a guy like LeBron James, LeBron's going to find that he's somebody he's going to like finding um, a lot. If Russell Westbrook's on this team, he's going to be somebody who's going to enjoy getting passes to Winnie Gabriel because he loves cutting to the basket and he knows how to finish. So I think his upside on both sides of the floor is there, right? So that's that's what we got. Of course, you want to bring up, obviously, one of my favorite Lakers, um, Austin Reeves, who's going to be a mainstay with us, I believe. I don't think he's going anywhere for a while. We just need to have his money ready at the end of the season. And I don't know how we're going to free that up, but we need to make sure we do. And then I look at THT. I'm not sure we're going to move him. Likely, I think they will move him. I do believe we will move him. But if we don't, he's another player who's a big body. Obviously, we know what he can do, and I think he's going to make a jump at some point. If it ain't this year, it's going to be within the next three years. It's going to be a big jump. So watch for THT, regardless if he's a Laker or not. But we still got him. He's a big guy. You see what I'm saying here, though? There's, there's size there. You, you, you see defense. You see size. You see energy. And the players that I just mentioned, Austin Reeves as well. He plays defense. He plays offense. Austin Reeves sets you up your, your, your guy. Um, in terms of uh, making plays for others, he's an excellent facilitator. He's he plays hard. He's athletic. He gets to the rim. He hits his free throws. His only thing is is, is shooting the ball. You know he needs to work on his three point shot. And we've seen him hit shots last year from three. In fact, he won a game against the Rockets at the buzzer shooting a three. I don't think he's hit a three since, but he did that. <laughs> so. I think Austin Reeves' upside is as high as anybody we've mentioned thus far, and I'm excited <clears throat> about our core because of all of those guys, all of those guys. And I didn't mention Malik Monk because I'm not sure we can keep him. I think he's going to make himself some money. That's why I didn't mention Malik Monk. I think he's out of here. But if we happen to keep him, he's a part of that as well. Super excited about him. If you're going to bring in three max contracts I just named you five players four or five players that I have no problem playing 25 plus minutes a game with a healthy AD and a healthy LeBron James down there to help them out at all times if you give me one of them superstars to be on that floor with those guys at all times they're going to scrap around play defense and do the best they can they're going to overachieve if they, if they don't have nobody else with them because they're just going to play well. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win games, but they're going to play well together because we've seen it already. You know, and when I say well, I mean within the, the, the lane that they stay in. You know what I mean? They're not going to be beating Giannis or nothing like that, but they're going to play good basketball together. I'm saying to you that the Lakers have a mid-level exception. Obviously, Kendrick Nunn wasn't mentioned. I don't know what we're going to do there. But you can definitely add him to the mix as well. I don't think that I look at his piece the same way I looked at it last year. If we lose Malik Monk, right? Because, see, players are shuffling around. Now you got to give them different roles. My problem with, with Kendrick Nunn last year, besides the health issue, was the fact that I thought his piece was redundant because we had all the guards that we had. I don't know that we'll have those same guards this year. If we are trading for Bradley Beal, that totally changes everything. If we're bringing back Russell Westbrook, you know, that changes things as well. But assuming we're making a trade of some sort to get Russell Westbrook out of here, maybe there's a, a, a role for Kendrick Nunn that wasn't available last year to which he wasn't able to pick up anyway. But you see what I'm saying? That, that he will be someone that we're looking at to help us a lot this year. You know, he is not a player who we expect to just come in and struggle. He's someone that we can we think can get us 12, 13 points a game if we give him a healthy dose of minutes, maybe even more. So, you know, I, I just look at that Laker team and I say, okay, when you consider all that we already have, they're not so bad, you know. Like, they're not so bad. Some of those players may not have trade value today, but you give them another season, they will. A guy like Wynion Gabriel is going to play his value up. Because what he looks like to me is a durable player. So what does that tell me? In theory, if he's able to stay healthy, we'll be able to get the most out of him because we're going to play him a lot of minutes. 
And what he does is going to accumulate statistics automatically just off of what I said earlier, which is his intent. And in his fire, you know, he, he's going to cut to the basket. So what is that going to do? You get easy buckets with a guy like that. You mess around, you see him get a 24.8 rebound, two steal game. Something like that. I mean, that's that's totally reasonable for the type of, of energy that he plays with. So, like, that's a really good game for him. I think, I think we can get something like that out of a player like him. And he get enough of those games under his belt, get his confidence going, who knows? Who knows? I, I really like the upside of a winning Gabriel. I already like the upside of of, of, of uh, Stanley Johnson just for, off the sheer defense. You know, and, and how hard he's had to get it out the mud. He's playing at home. He's comfortable. He's found a home in this league, and it just so happens to be the Lakers. I don't think there's anything better than that if you're Stanley Johnson. I really think he's in a great spot, and I think he's going to flourish here. I think he's happy. And so that's that's I'm excited about his uh, his year for us. So it's it's a lot, man. But that's defense. Anthony Davis has some defensive big players already on the team. They're here. We need to get him some more big players. We need to make sure he doesn't have to play center at all. That's most important to me. I would love for us to do something to make sure that Anthony Davis does not have to play center. I think it's 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 in important that we do everything we can and not only make him comfortable but also put him in position to stay healthy of course and then from there to work on what we need to to make sure that he looks good on the basketball floor and I think a lot of what went wrong was some of the stuff that was going on down there particularly having him in small ball lineups asking him to be the only big it was a bad decision his rebounding is not up to that level you know he's not he does everything great and he's going to accumulate rebounds but that is not his game in fact I hope he's working on that in this offseason that would be something that I would I would tell him to uh, give real close attention to because that was where I think there's an area of, of legitimate improvement in Anthony Davis's game where I could say he can put in the hours and work with the coaches and up his his game in that way. It's rebounding. It's rebounding. And it starts not, not from I – don't, I don't think it necessarily has to do with anything other than just positioning before it's even time to jump. You know what I mean? Getting in position – from the from the floor making sure he boxes people out making sure he's in position to from an angle from which he can jump and just catch it you know what i mean far be it for me to say what an athlete should or should not do but i've watched a lot of great great rebounders and it does start from the floor a lot of times it really does start from the floor but nevertheless i'm sure anthony davis is, is surrounded by people who can tell him anything that he would need to know and I trust he'd be willing to humble himself and do whatever he needs to do to get better. Because I think that that's what's required of him. If you're a Laker, you want to get to that highest level. You don't even ask to be here if you don't want to reach a higher level. And I think that's what I would tell him. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, at some point in time, you do wish the Lakers would kind of be a little easier in, on the players that are here. But at the same time, if you request to be here, you should expect to demand greatness of yourself. You should expect to be the great player that wants to put in extra work see that's the thing i think that's what the lakers should be selling actually sort of like the miami heat do and their extension of us anyway with pat over there it's basically us part two but the idea that i have in mind is if you're coming here you should be demanding excellent of excellence of yourself this is not a place where you come and lay in the sunshine the sunshine comes after winning the championships here Anything before that is, is is a fight. It's a fight for for the uh, for the ability to be the best. And and if you just want to lay in the sunshine, just go to Clippers. They have an entirely different mantra. You know what I mean? They're trying to get they're doing it their way. But for us, it's about excellence and trying to reach excellence and everybody holding themselves accountable. And I believe it starts with at the top, and it trickles all the way down to the bottom and I think that would be what I'd sell going forward you know you know and and, and that's you know that's that's just my, my my take on things because a lot of times guys get here and they're overwhelmed they get here and this place is too big for them they get here and they want the Lakers to, to ease up they get here and they say why don't you just let me be me I don't think you should should approach coming to the Lakers that way no more I think if you're an athlete you should come here because you want to you want to be the best you want to reach that top. You want to reach the pressured, the most pressured place you can find yourself. You know what I mean? 
not abusive, but we're going to apply pressure for you to shine. You know what I mean? Pressure for you to shine. That's what it's about. So I don't know. That's how I look at it, man. This place is this is a this is a very bright lights type of place. You're going to see all the stars. You're going to love the ambiance of being a Laker. It's, it's nothing like it. But if you struggle here, you become really irrelevant, you know, and no matter who you are. Because we've had such giants for so long. Lead this place with such a ferocious work ferocious work ethic and determination to be the best. You know what I mean? From Magic to Kareem, Kobe to Shaq, all the way to where we are now with Braun. There is no way you can put on this uniform and not think that there's a gold standard or that there's not some expectations that you're going to have to reach or, or place upon yourself without anybody even saying nothing to you. You should demand that your number be in the rafters or if you can't reach that level, you want to be amongst the guys who we remember. You know what I mean? The guys who, who helped us win championships and that's that's what it is. If you're not trying to win a championship with the Lakers, you're trying to get ridiculed. That's basically what you're here to do. You're here to be challenged to be better. That's it. That is all we're about. So that's what I want people to understand about my mentality as a Laker fan. And I think that's what I want the entire organization to kind of push forward and be about. We never lose sight of what it is that we're doing. Yes, we want to be superstars. Yes, we want superstars to be here. But we always remember that it's basketball. That's the meat and potatoes of what we're doing. It's just basketball. And, and as long as we keep basketball first and keep the elements of basketball present, you'll have the stars come to you because they will want to be here where excellence is demanded and the lights are the brightest. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.